In this video, I'll show you how to repair the Sony WH-1000 XM3s. The part in particular that I'm repairing is this uh, swivel backing right here. The plastic just broke on the outside from pressure. This will also cover how to repair and replace the hanger, which is this component here, um, and then the inner swivel or the outer cover to the swivel. And this is for the left side. If you need a video for the right side, it is different. The equipment you'll need for this repair include a soldering iron, a small Phillips head screwdriver. I have a plastic pry tool as well, which is not mandatory, but it's helpful. The first step is to remove these four screws that are holding the back of the headphones in and then we'll be able to get to the components we need. Once you've unscrewed those screws, you can flip it over and you might want to put your hand under it to catch the screws if they fall. We'll pull off the back cover very gently. At this point, if you haven't preheated your soldering iron, you should do so because on this cover, there is uh, there are two sections that we'll have to desolder. After you desolder those two connections, you can go ahead and pull the cover off. There are a lot of connections here, but all we're concerned about are the ones coming off of this main black cord because that's what we'll have to remove. So first you want to remove this yellow tape. And next we will desolder these connections. I will attach a diagram with the correct order of um, and what color for resoldering purposes. And you'll find that in the description of this video. Make sure any additional wires are out of the way and go ahead and desolder these connections. After you're done desoldering, you can remove these two screws holding the hanger in and we can go ahead and start taking apart the headphones. The hanger just slides out. After you've removed the speaker, flip the headphones over, and on this outer edge, there's a small hole. You can go ahead and pry this plastic cover off. And please note that there are two pieces of plastic that snap this cover in. They will break when you remove this, but that's okay. You can just apply a little bit of super glue when you put it back together, and it'll hold very well. Pull the wiring out of the hanger. Next, there are two screws holding the slider in place. At this point, if you are just replacing this inner swivel component or the hanger, you can go ahead and stop. Um, if you're replacing the hanger, you actually could stop before you remove these two screws because you won't have to do anything with the swivel. But if your outer component is broken, like mine is, you can go ahead and keep watching. Remove one last screw. Pull the wiring all the way through. And our teardown is complete. To start with the installation of the new component, we'll go ahead and thread 
the wires through the top here. Slide it through. Slide it over this clip. Back on. There's a black notch on the outer side here and it will fit into this little beige plastic part. So go ahead and line that up and let it snap in first and then you can screw the screw back into place. There's a comment I want to make. Before you can thread the cable through here, um, unfortunately it's extremely tight and it's at awkward angles. So I find that it's best if you go ahead and take apart this hinge and it makes it a lot easier to get the cable back through than trying to thread every single one of these back through here. Keep the screws somewhere safe, you don't want to lose them. Next, remove these two screws holding this metal piece in place. After that, go ahead and remove the swivel. Finally, there are two very small screws holding this hinge in place. We'll also need to press out this metal plate that's holding the hinge together. Slide it off. You'll see a little blue cover. Go ahead and take that off as well. Now you're ready to take the hinge apart. Just put your pry tool in there and open it up. This whole piece will come off and now it's open and we'll be able to fit our cable directly through there. Go ahead and put the cable through, snap the hinge top back on. Please don't forget to put the blue rubber band back over. That helps it swivel and pivot correctly. If you forget that, it will not function as intended. Once that's back together, you can put the wires through this component. Go ahead and put it on. It will only fit correctly one way. So that's how you know it's the right way. If you try to put it on the wrong way, it will not fit snugly. So you'll be able to tell. And go ahead and take this metal piece, slide it back into place. You want to make sure it's nice and snug. Next, we will attach this inner component by that plate. And you'll want the plate to be almost flush with the back. That's how you know you're putting it in the correct way. So you may have to work it a little to get it back through. Don't do anything with this repair with too much pressure. Or you could break something, but you do have to apply a little bit of pressure to get it through. And go ahead and get the screws with the metallic backs and secure this into place. Next, we will slide this into place. Make sure it is in on both sides and flush with the back. I'll go ahead and pull this cord a little to make sure you have enough slack. 
you don't have too much tucked away in there. Get your last two screws with the metallic looking ends here. After you've completed that, we'll go ahead and slide this back into the hanger. Now we'll work the cable through on this outer side and you can tell which side you should put it through because there are cracks here where the cord will fit nicely in. Here's where I'd recommend using a little bit of super glue to put this cover back on. You can tell there was some glue residue on here that isn't very sticky anymore. And also, there were two snaps where it secured into the, ha the hanger. And those broke when you do the teardown. So you might need a little super glue on those to hold it in place. After you have the cover on, Please apply gentle pressure for a good 30 seconds or so. Once you've completed that, I would go ahead and test the slider, make sure it's swiveling correctly. Um, it'd be better to notice if something's up now than once you've resoldered everything back in place. Our next step will be to connect the speaker component and resolder everything. Go ahead and slide this back over. You'll want this part with the dip in there to go in. You'll want to slide in this side first and then the side with the cable after. And that will just set right in place. When I'm resoldering, I find it's a little easier if I turn it sideways to work on it. And again, I will have a diagram of the correct colors in the description. So you don't have to follow too carefully on this step but you can use this section of the video as reference when you're repairing it. Starting on this longer bottom row, we have copper. Next is green and red. After that is black. Then this thick dark blue. Because it's thicker it may be a little hard to solder in. So you may need a little extra solder for that. Or use a little bit more pressure. Following that we have white. And purple. blue and copper, and we have blue and black. These may be a little harder to do because of the angle, so take your time. And then we have red. Next we'll move on to the top row. With that starting at the bottom, we have teal. We have red and black. And there's one with red, blue, and copper. And 
finally we finish up with green. The last thing to solder in will be this green and copper wires from your cover. And we'll just do copper on the inside and then green on the outside. When I soldered in that last connection, my headphones powered on by themselves, which is normal, and they may do, and then it made a high-pitched squeal. It may happen to you, it may not, but it's just from all the magnetic components in there and with the headphones being open, you have magnets and metal close to each other where they aren't normally, and it causes that interference. So don't worry if that happens, just power your headphones off and continue the repair. You shouldn't have any issues once they're put back together. Need to secure this cable here and also go ahead and slide this connector back in. Once that cable's in, I would go ahead and put that piece of black tape to secure this all down. Mine had one extra piece of tape, which you can use to help secure these last few cables as well. After that, you can put the cover back on. And flip your headphones back over using the four long screws. We will secure the cover. Go ahead and put your cushions back in and connect the pads. So I went ahead and connected them to my phone and playing music. Pause button's working. Volume up is working. Volume down is working. Rewind. So it appears that everything was connected properly. So I hope this video helped. And again, there is a diagram of the correct wire placement when you're resoldering for you to use. Also, there's some links to my eBay store where I sell various components for these headphones. Please uh, comment below if you have any questions. Thank you.